Hi, this is Martin Brennan from Imagineer Systems. In this tutorial, we're going to look at tracking and rotoscoping in elements when foregrounds get in the way. In part one of this tutorial, we'll deal with the tracking and rotoscoping parts in Mocha. And then in part two, we'll look at the workflow for various compositing applications. Okay, so here's the phone inside Mocha. I'm using the full version of Mocha here, but this technique can be used in any of its derivatives, say Mocha for After Effects and Mocha for Final Cut. What we want to do here is track the screen element so we can replace footage into it later, but we're going to have to deal with this finger coming across the shot. I'm just going to briefly show you what would happen if we left the finger alone and just tried to track the screen by itself. So using the XBind tool, I'm just going to draw a quick mask around the edge of the screen. This spline layer basically searches in this area for things that change. If I right click a tangent we can smooth or square all the corners. From this point if I track backwards you can see that it locks onto the screen pretty well. However, if I go to the same point and track forwards, the finger starts to come into play. And you'll see super pretty quickly that the finger pulls the track right off. This is because it's becoming part of the search area and the track assumes that it has to follow along. So what we need to do is remove the finger out of the equation. So let's just trash this layer. What I'm going to do first is rotate this finger out of the shot. Right here it starts to cross over where we want to track, so I'm going to start from here. Okay, so selecting the X-Blind tool again, let's create a rough shape around the finger. It doesn't need to be too detailed at this stage, because we only want to keep the finger from ruining the track of the phone screen. While you're working with a matte shot like this, it's sometimes useful to actually turn on the mat, turn on the selected tangent, and turn off the splines. This way it's a little bit clearer to see where your mat is going and to adjust p points accordingly. You can even turn off colorize just to see how much of your finger is being included. Since we're only working with this uh, layer from frame 30 onwards, we can also go up to our layer properties and type in 30 into the endpoint. This way the layer only shows from frame 30 onwards. A useful time-saving trick when you're working with Mocha is to create as few keyframes as possible and then use the tracker to help you out. In this case I'm going to go to about the middle of this section and animate my spline across. We can use the rotate tool to click at any point to rotate around that axis. Tweak it a little bit here. And let's do the same again with the eh, about here. Again, we can use our rotate tool, click at any point, and it will rotate around that point. and that will probably do for the time being. You can see here that it's a fairly loose animation. Normally you'd have to go back in and tweak all these keyframes in between the others 
you know, breaking it down, going halfway, tweak, halfway, tweak, etc. However, in this case, if we use Mocha to track forwards, you'll see it looks quite erratic, but something quite clever is happening in the background. What Mocha is doing is trying to find where you've animated and use the tracker to track the finger in between those points. This saves you a lot of manual work later on, because now we only have to find a few points where it's off and adjust, whereas before you would have had to do a lot of frames to get it to follow properly. We can now go in and track the screen. 